Welcome back to Cool Computer Science. This video is on understanding problem analysis, coding, and execution cycle. The goal is to understand how the editor, linker, preprocessor, compiler, loader, and program execution plays a role in an algorithm. In the previous video, I discussed the editor, linker, preprocessor, compiler, loader, and program execution in detail. In this video, let's first consider what an algorithm is. An algorithm is a step-by-step -step problem solving process in which the solution is arrived in a finite amount of time. In this example of algorithm design, let's consider the problem. To design a program for a cash register that tells the cashier how much money to give back in change. Let's state what is given by in this problem. In this problem, we will be given how much the person will owe. So now we can begin writing the algorithm. First, we want to subtract the amount given from the amount owed. Second, if the result is greater than zero, print the amount of money to give back in change. Else, if the result is equal to zero, then print that no money is given back in change. Else, if the result is less than zero, print what the person still owes. For example, let's pretend that the person gave the cash register $8, and the item cost $7. The change to give back is $1. In this case, it, the results are greater than zero. So let's now consider the case that the person gave the cashier $7 and the item still cost $7, the result will be 0. This is the second case in which the person will get no money in change. And the third case is suppose the person gave the cashier $6 and the item cost $7 in which the result will be negative one in which it will print that the person still owes money. Now that we've considered what an algorithm is, we've considered algorithm design, let's consider problem analysis and coding cycle. In the problem analysis and coding cycle we are first given a problem. From that problem we make an analysis. From our analysis we are able to design an algorithm. Then we move to our editor in which we are able to code the program. After coding, the preprocessor comes into play, the program is compiled, the program is, goes through the linker, the program goes through the loader, then, then execution, and then finally we receive the results. To better understand the problem analysis, coding, and execution cycle, let's consider some of the errors we can get when writing your code. The first type of error that can occur is an error when you compile, a compiling error. And this error is a result of problem with your coding. Such an error is called syntax error. Syntax error occurs when incorrect grammar is used. For example, if we consider that first program that we wrote in the video, my first C++ program, we can identify a syntax error if we delete the semicolon here and we try to compile it, we get an error. Or let's say we forget a quotation mark here and we try to compile it, we get an error. Um, Another thing we could do is, say, let's say we forget a, a bracket right here, and we try to compile it, that's another type of error. Or an error could occur, let's say instead of using the insertion operator right here, let's say we had the extraction operator, and we try to compile it, we will get an error. So there are several types of syntax errors. Now let's consider another type of error. 
Now this next type of error is called a semantic error and it occurs at program execution. A semantic error can be a result of incorrect coding, algorithm design, or analysis. So, and this type of error is a semantic error. So what is the difference between a semantic error and a syntax error? A syntax error, again, involves the program's grammar. You forgot a semicolon, you forgot a quotation mark, or something like that. A semantic error is that you got the grammar correct in the program, but your thought of the program was incorrect. The way you laid out the program, there's an error with that. And as a result, you can have problems in editing algorithm design or analysis, so the semantic error is more challenging to solve. So let's take a look at some semantic errors. If you have a semantic error as the error in this code, your program should compile. So let's see if it compiles and it should also run. And it compiles and runs. But we see we have a semantic error. In this second line here, 3 plus 10 equals 1,300. And when we look at our code, it says 3 plus 10. And that, this part is correct. And then we have then tell the program to add 3 plus 10. And that's correct. And then we have these two zeros right here. And it looks like the space, there's no space between these two zeros. So it's looking like if the number is 1,300. So let's make that correction. In fact, I'm just going to delete it. Or, you know, I'll show you the space. Let me run it again. And we see here that was the error. This is called a semantic error, but a result of um, incorrect coding. So 3 plus 10 equals 13. The other type of semantic error that can occur is a result of incorrect problem analysis. So let's consider the problem. Multiply two numbers together. If they are equal to 18, then return true. So let me comment this out so it doesn't get in the way of the code. And then we see here, I have it written down here. It says, if this, these two numbers, number 1 times this number here, equals 18 output true. So let's try the number 4 times 6. And we run it. After we compile, we notice that there is no true at the bottom here. And the result and the reason why is because of incorrect problem analysis. We said 4 times 6 is 18, and 4 times 6 is not 18, it's 24. So if we say 3 times 6 is 18, and we compile and run the program, the result we get is true. So our error was because we did not analyze the problem correctly. We did not correctly multiply two numbers to get 18, and that's what the problem wanted us to do. Semantic errors can also be a result of incorrect algorithm design. And in this instance, we see that 3 plus 8 does equal to 18, but instead of returning true like what the problem wanted, it's returning false. And when we consider our algorithm, we notice that we have false here instead of true. So if we close this and make this true, compile it and run it again, we see that the program runs as expected. At first, this can seem a little bit confusing. If it is confusing, 
what I recommend you do is that rewatch the videos again. That's the first thing. The second thing, if you haven't been doing it, I recommend that you write the code as as I write it because the best way to learn programming is to actually write the code. So before you go any further, I recommend that you review the video My First C++ Program, also the video Processing a C++ Program, and this video Understanding the Problem Analysis, Coding, and Execution Cycle. Because after these three videos, we're going to really get into C++ programming. We're going to talk about things like variables and functions and many other concepts in C++ programming. So thank you for watching and I hope that you enjoyed this video.